Shreveport Mayor Ali Tyler is joining us. Hey, Miss Ali, how are you? Thanks for taking time for us. Good morning, Robert. How are you? I'm excellent, ma'am. You got your vote yesterday, 5-2 to two at the City Council. Phase 1, the first battle goes to Miss Ali. What happens now? Well, and let me just say, uh, first uh, this morning, that I have with me Attorney William Bradford. Uh, he is on the team that we took to New Orleans, and I want to make sure that we can get uh, information to our publics and educate them. Let me tell you, cross, the Cross Bayou Corridor is not just a Nolly Tyler thing because it's a Shreveport thing. You bet. It is, it is in the 2016 Great Expectations Master Plan. And, uh, you know, I've gone into that plan and pulled out projects that this whole community thought we needed to do in order to show a progressive city. So that's, I want to clear that up, okay? Yeah, we voted on that in 95, right? Something like that. Yeah. Back in the 90s. Mm-hmm. And so we have done a lot of things just to make sure that we're moving ahead. You know, they told me when I started running for mayor that we had um, – this outstanding citizens group, about a thousand people of, of across the, this city that came together to develop that great expectations master plan. But the plan uh, seemed to have been sitting on the shelf, in my opinion, and uh, some of those things were being implemented, but we're trying to execute on those things. This is a pretty big dream. It is. Let me let me ask you about corporate realty. Can you tell me what we know about corporate realty, how they came to the table and they've got a big wallet, apparently. They uh, invest in places where and what what we've discovered about them is that they have invested in places where they know the market is great and you know, they're in business, too, but they have a proven track record. Attorney Bradford? So when the city of Shreveport was offered the opportunity to respond to the RFP, the mayor tasked us with, with finding the best people to help us accomplish a response. Uh, you know, Corporate Realty, uh, I was put in touch with them through one of my law school contacts. Again, you know, in my business, we make a lot of relationships. We make sure we touch a lot of people. And so he had the, uh, the, the inroads to get me in contact with him. I met with their principal, talked to their principal, CEO Robert Simon, uh, did some due diligence on their company. I've seen their portfolio, I've seen their, their Rolodex of business and the buildings that they created and the developments that they've created down in the southeastern region and uh, felt a comfort level to introduce them to the mayor and to move that relationship forward. But I, I made sure to instill with them that, you know, at this point, because of how expedited this process and response time was with the New Orleans Pelicans that you know, they would have to take this on as an investment themselves if they wanted to participate moving forward. And so uh, Mr. Simon went back to his, to his shop and did his due diligence, looked at our market and decided that Shreveport would be a good investment for him. And they have uh, taken the reins and helped to steer this ship towards a good successful response. I think it was very impressive. The New Orleans Pelicans uh, even commented that our response was one of the only response that received not one but two standing ovations while we presented to them. And so uh, they have the experience level. They've shown what they can do, especially in the Birmingham area. Uh, the, the, Bar- the Birmingham Barons have seen a resurgence there. They've actually brought back, uh, with, along with the city of Birmingham, a team that has revitalized their downtown and shown great growth down there. And so, uh, you know, when you speak with those individuals, with Mr. Simon and his group, you'll see that they employ the best, they work with the best, they know the best. And so that's the kind of team we want to bring to the table for development that is, that is this important. Let's start with a couple of money questions. Question number one, the city's on the hook. We're going to borrow about $30 million. Walk us through that process. What we're asking the citizens to, to see is that we're asking for money that has already been dedicated for this purpose. The B4 Riverfront Fund is money dedicated for the purpose of development of economic, of, of economic development along Cross Bayou and the Red River. And so this money is essentially a stopgap for us to construct the facility. The facility is, is, is designed to be self-sustaining for its operational costs, okay? And so utilizing money that are already available, that are designated for that purpose, uh, continue to, to promote the ideals of the city of Shreveport. And so it's a multi-step process. The, the process that occurred yesterday was the first introduction of a resolution and ordinance to allow for uh, the hiring of professionals needed to issue bonds if the city chooses to elect to move forward with the project. And, and let me just piggyback on that, uh, Aaron and Robert, and say 
Um, when I uh, and I've spent a lot of time with the experts at the table that we brought to the table, and, and anybody can go and research and see what kind of company it is, and that's what people do. Instead of speculating, we're trying to present facts and try to educate people. When we check corporate realty out, these people are solid. They have the wherewithal to be able to do development and bring uh, a lot of credibility to the table. I checked them out too, and, and I didn't. I wasn't able to find anything negative. I'm just saying, Miss Ali, absolutely, uh, absolutely. So we don't. We do due diligence, uh, Aaron. We try. I another, mean, we you know we all make mistakes uh, uh, in, in our lives, and, and we try to learn from those mistakes. And one of the things that I've learned down through the years as a CEO in education is that when you start dealing with people, and when you start dealing with uh, you know those folk who trust you to do the right thing for the people you serve. You do due diligence on checking out those people that you bring to the table. So we've done that with corporate realty. But let me tell you, with this NBA backing and with the Benson family backing, let me tell you, we have, I think, a win-win. But Shreveport has to believe in Shreveport. Our citizens for so long sit back and say, we can't do this, we can't do that. We have got to believe in ourselves. And let me tell you, this project is so significant for revitalizing this community. Not only will we be investing just to bring in an NBA league, but we're going to be investing in revitalizing throughout this community. We're talking job creation. We're talking opportunities for entrepreneurs. We're talking helping those small businesses that need that lift right now. But I can tell you, the NBA is going to bring to the table a lot of credibility along with the Benson family. So, I mean, we've seen it. We've looked at other leagues uh, in the nation that have taken on these, um, this particular kind of, I guess, project, and they're being successful. Shreveport can be successful. Let, let us ask some questions, Ms. Mayor. Ali, Ms. Ali, pardon me. The second money question. The $100 million or more that the incoming builders are going to put up, that the, they're going to put uh, in, into, the, into the project, at any point is Shreveport, could Shreveport be on the hook for any of that money if certain goals, expectations aren't crossed or met? The, the project is designed to be only an obligation of the city for the purposes of the sports complex. The, the outside development, the other development, the $100 million-plus development, is private dollars. Again, some of you may be familiar with the term public-private partnership. This is precisely what it is. It's an investment by a group who sees a potential opportunity in the city of Shreveport to develop property and also uh, an investment from the city to develop an anchor, a destination. Let's think about what this creates. This actually creates a destination for our area. It's no longer just a place that you can come visit and that you may have one or two events to go to. You can actually spend an entire weekend in this proposed development. That's what it's designed for. It's designed to be a place where you can live, work, play, and stay. You're talking about additional heads and beds. You're bringing people to the area for the purposes of attending events that are much uh, larger than what we currently see in the, at this point. And so, you know, you're going to have the need for, I mean, this is something that I really like about corporate realty and their approach to how they do business. One of the things that they want to encourage in the development is also the local businesses. They want to encourage local opportunity and to education of local contractors and local developers and, and local operators of, of small businesses and medium-sized businesses. And let, so, me ask, let me ask the mayor this, uh, Mr. Bradford. The, the actual land who will then own the land? Is the city essentially selling this land to corporate realty? No. We own the land. And we we'll, will and own, we'll own it under We've this deal. We've already worked through that situation, and we've got some more things to do, but we own the land. I mean, the development, you know, they'll, they'll bring pr uh, uh, private people to come to the table to do the development, but we'll own the land. How, and we'll how, own the, the sports complex. And how will we pay back the $30 million revenue bond? Where's that money coming from? Everybody keeps telling you, you hear this everywhere you go, we're broke, we're broke. Where are we going to get the money to pay that back? That money is generated by ordinance from the river boats and from downtown additional money. So that money is put into a special revenue account for the purposes of economic development. That is what that that account is intended to be used for. But you and I both know, Mayor, you know, riverboat gambling revenues are down. Ronnie Jones is going to join us in the 8 o'clock hour to talk about how gambling revenues are, are steady going down. That has to be a concern to you guys. It is. But let me, let me tell you, uh, Aaron, when we bring in this NBA league, that's why they're the anchor tenant. 
We're going to be generating a lot of money just because they're going to be here bringing in people from across the architects to uh, spend monies in our community. Also, we're going to use that sports complex for all kind of competitions that we are not able to have right now. And also, to, to piggyback on what the mayor is saying, there's additional revenue streams that are available in a development like this. Again, one of the things we talked about is how that that portion, that corridor, is not generating any sales tax revenue. It's not generating any revenue for the city. There are special financing districts that the state law provides for that allows us to create that district and create a baseline and to receive money because of the increased amount of tax that are generated in that area. So that can be purposed for additional debt service and for improvements against all of the uh, the buildings and developments that come up in the cross body corridor. And to add to that, we've got people who are interested in actually uh, coming in, being uh, being a major sponsors, because the, you know we got people because of the NBA brand and the Pelican and Benson brand. They want to come in, actually, and uh, invest with uh, naming rights and so forth and so on. We're going to have different revenue streams coming in. Uh, Aaron. Let me ask you like this, this, if the Pelicans... The is a catalyst for additional growth. So it's not a one-off development that you're putting in, an, in a corridor that stands alone. This is something that is programmed and created to be a spur, a catalyst for downtown growth, to improve your downtown. It, it makes uh, buildings downtown more marketable. It makes areas around downtown more marketable. It makes areas across the city more marketable because you've created a destination, you're creating growth, you're showing progress. And so those, that, that, you know, outside investors and outside developers begin to take note, as well as your folks home, at home. You start activating those folks who go home every day and, and may not have an opportunity or do not or choose not to come out and to, to mm-hmm. explore and use all the resources that the city has available. But when you create that sense of place, that sense of, uh, of, of destination, you encourage additional spending in, throughout your city. And so that will help revenue as well. If the Pelicans is a no-go, do we still move forward with this development? I mean, our, our voters want Cross Bayou developed. Do you move forward without the Pelicans in this equation? I think that uh, Corporate Realty has, exp- has expressed that they are interested in, in development throughout downtown Shreveport. Now, it may change the conversation of how that development occurs. I think the Pelicans create an amazing anchor. They create that sense of destination that we're talking about. And so it makes for a very marketable area to go back there. So we absolutely want them here. We want them here as a resource because, again, when you bring an organization like that to your area, you're also bringing along the resources that they provide. And so the access to uh, capital that they have and the access to personnel and people that they have. And so you want to encourage them to come to this area to to bring their brand and to, to bring the market space that they bring because that provides additional lift to the area, provides an avenue that this city has not seen. And so, you know, we want to, we want to focus down on actually bringing them here and, and encouraging a destination like this to be created. With the Shreveport Convention Center downtown, the Hilton Hotel still be, <clears throat> pardon me, still being relatively new, isn't there some concern that uh, besides the dates that you'll have for the Pelicans minor league team at the new arena, that, that for other events that you're sort of competing against yourself? Well, you know, that was one of the considerations we took into place when we did our due diligence on this. You know, we talked to SMG, who's the management company for the convention center, and so we, we talked to them about, and the municipal auditorium, hey, we don't want to create something that competes with ourselves. And they said specifically, no, this fills a need that we have in the city of Shreveport. Right now, there is not a mid-sized sports complex in our area. People are driving all the way from Natchitoches and Baton Rouge to Dallas to go to AAU tournaments, to cheer tournaments, to volleyball tournaments. Right now, you fill a, you fill a void that's in this area. So you start drawing from East Texas, South Arkansas, uh, you know, Mississippi, Longview, Longview, Tyler, Longview, Tyler, Lufkin, Texarkana, Holt, mm-hmm. Hot Springs. Little Rock, Monroe, Ruston, we have people who want to come to something like what we're trying to develop. And that NBA league is going to really help us. Now, do we want corporate realty here, whether or not the Pelicans come? Yes. The conversation may change because the NBA league is not just some little minor something. This is a major deal, Robert and Aaron. Mm-hmm. And because they are here, and they're going to bring their resources to the table. It is more attractive for, and I've gotten several uh, different companies that have actually contacted me. They want to be a part of this because they see the potential. They see that this is a place that they can come. Our transportation infrastructure is, is awesome. I mean, people want to come 
uh, Look, to this area. We have a lot of visitors, a lot of uh, events, a lot of uh, all kind of festivals. It's going to even pick up more. That's going to generate a lot of dollars that we can use to help us complete uh, the infrastructure needs that we have in our city. People talk about, you know, we need to just not do this and just go and do infrastructure. Let me tell you, we don't have enough money to do all the infrastructure and address all the needs. Let me, add, Mayor, can you address those? And I know you're hearing the naysayers, and they're all around you. Oh, yeah. Uh, the Red River District was a failure. You you had the fairgrounds fail. How do you address all of those people who say we've done these kind of things before and they've all been failures? Well, let me, let me tell you what I say. I say that this is a one-time opportunity. It is, it is unlike what people try to compare it to. But, you know, and, I, and I'll say what I said last night in an interview. You know, people who are successful had to have some failures before they got to be successful. So if, if, if people just stop doing anything, then to me, that is, mo- that is worse than failure. And I can tell you, I believe with this major brand coming to Shreveport, with the NBA League, this is going to really spur that growth that we need. I mean, I think it's a win-win. I think we sell ourselves short.